Well, hello and a warm welcome to today's video. Dr. Sil here, junior doctor from Australia, training to become a psychiatrist. And in today's video, we're looking at some footage from the 50s about folie à deux. Now, uh, schizophrenia and shared delusional disorders are, uh, well, schizophrenia is more common than you'd think. It's 1% of the population, kind of, no matter where you are in the world. Uh, the incidence is relatively similar. Uh, and, and places where there is a difference in incidences, it's usually due to uh, diagnostic classification classification issues rather than actually different um, prevalence of the illness or incidence of the illness. Um, but folie à deux, I've only seen a couple of times working as a, a doctor in mental health and psychiatry. Folie à deux is a shared delusional disorder uh, where essentially uh, it's not just one person with a uh, delusion, but it's two people who both experience a psychosis who, are, who have a shared uh, delusional belief system uh, and often it's quite uh, complex and structured and uh, and it can even be bizarre. Now bizarre, when we use the word bizarre talking about delusions, it's not a kind of value judgment uh, saying that that's weird and wrong. It, it's more about something that can be basically considered very, very unlikely to be real. So you know, a belief around um, an alien uh, imposter group inhabiting uh, the police states or heads of state and the police and that kind of thing, uh, that, that would be considered a bizarre delusion because it's so unlikely that there are aliens inhabiting uh, the bodies of, of different, you know, senior world leaders. Uh, anyway, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But that that would be the that would be how we use the word bizarre. So, so folie à deux can be bizarre or non bizarre, and uh, always involves two people. And often it's uh, people who are socially isolated and live together. <clears throat> so a mother or daughter, father or son, a husband and wife, a brother and sister though, that are kind of socially isolated and, and form a shared delusional belief system. Uh, and delusions is one of the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. So, so if you want to learn more about schizophrenia, I've got heaps of videos on it. You can look, but let's get into today's footage from the 50s. I'll do everything for you if you take us out from that criminal place into the place with normal people. Layman, it's a criminal place. Could you sit down a moment? Could you sit down a moment and we talk it over? I think it's right you take two innocent people and put them in with criminals. Do you know that they're criminals? You must have known before that they're all criminals. Let's sit down a moment, Zina, will you? I don't want to go back let's to t If there were criminals... Let's sit down and let's talk this thing over. All right, over. let's talk this thing over. The first thing to say there is that was a very good um, de-escalation uh, technique from the psychiatrist. Obviously, he walks into the room and these two uh, women are distressed and... Uh, you know, very worried that they're going to be sent to a place of criminals. They're probably worried for their safety. They're probably quite suspicious, maybe even paranoid. Um, uh, I don't know that, right? I'm just, th these are very common symptoms you see in schizophrenia and I'm being led by the title of the video. They haven't shown any evidence of that yet. But um, what he do what he does is uh, is he ha he maintains a soft tone and he kind of lets them know that he's about to give them some time. You know, and that is very reassuring to distressed people. If someone is panicking uh, and you're standing up and you're looking rushed and your volume and pace of speech is high and quick, they will feel that they don't have you for enough time to explain themselves. But if you say, let's sit down for a moment, let's sit down here, I'll bring my chair over, we can sit down, let's talk through this. And that gives them a sense that they have space to make themselves feel understood, which is in itself very therapeutic to feel understood you know that that is helpful so anyway i just wanted to make a quick comment on how positive that kind of start was that's horrible you, you mean here oh it's, not it's, this it's, but this is douglas hall can't i talk about some other place must i always talk about the place i'm in i'm in douglas hall but i'm referring to a place that was a, i was with the people that have hurt me in the all these patients there's something wrong with them they're criminals and I really mean it. Did you know the what other criminals? Patients are criminals? The patients are criminals. Yes. Well, I didn't know that. Why? Yes. Why? Because they have hurt me. 
They really have her. If you think I'm kidding you, I'm not kidding you at all. all right. They know how to... I think they can kill a person by somehow from a distance. You know, if you take a gunman, someone with a gun, a gangster, the police know, well, they know they're looking for him because he's done something everyone could see with a gun. He killed someone. But these people are dangerous. They can kill people at a distance. I don't know how they do it. I really mean it. If, if they did it, if they hurt me with a gun, or I can, I, can exp I can tell the police, then nothing will happen. I don't know how to tell, but they can hurt people. Honestly, they know how. But they haven't got guns. They haven't and got they guns. Have That's just it. It's yeah. worse if they yeah. haven't got a gun. Everybody would believe me when I tell them. Because a gangster, the police know they can't find the gangster. They know he had a gun. They have something on him. But what can you do with people that they haven't got guns, and yet they know how to hurt people out of this? They're hurting you or your mother? They hurt me. I'm, I'm perfectly healthy. Only time when they hurt yeah, me, there's yeah. nothing wrong they, with they, me. They uh, absolutely de make you sick. Who is it only your yeah, daughter? Yeah, me too. Who is hurting you? I don't know. Soon I go, that, that's happened a few times. Soon I go in bed, I feel perfect health. Nothing they can stop me. it too. They can hurt you for the moment, and then they can stop it. Yeah, I mean, and it, I go it, in sounds, bed, it sounds so funny. I know it does. Soon I, 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 I fall asleep, I, I feel something happened to me. I, I, I can't open my they eyes. They have something, the, these the people like. So this experience <clears throat> of feeling attacked at a distance, almost telepathically, almost via some, I guess it's, it's hard for them even to describe what's happening, but to be attacked at a distance is pretty common uh, theme among people with, with psychotic illnesses because what's happening is they're getting either normal or abnormal bodily sensations. You know, they could have pain in an ankle or in a body part, um, or it could just be a normal bodily sensation like a burp or um, a bit of, I don't know, you know, tummy grumbling. And although the sensation is normal, the interpretation and perception uh, becomes abnormal. It, 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 the kind of explanation of the normal sensation is a psychotic explanation. So some people might, if they have twisted their ankle, believe that maybe there's a transmitter into their ankle. For, for the record, I'm making all these examples up. Uh, I've never met a patient with that specific example, but um, I've met very similar things. And, I, and so that I, I try not to give examples of patients I've met, obviously, because I don't want to breach confidentiality. Um, but I just kind of use what I've seen and then make something new up that follows similar themes. But yeah, if, if you have a grumbling tummy, you might think that there's an alien baby inside of you. You might feel like there's a transmitter um, picking up secret service military frequencies, all sorts of things that, that to a non-psychotic person don't feel possible. But to, this, to the brain that's in a psychosis, it's desperately trying to uh, explain what's happening by with delusional content because it's it's, it's a disease state of the brain it's it what, what's happening in the brain is not normal and and so the, the explanations are not normal but it feels extremely real you can imagine how distressing this must be to, to feel like you're never safe like to feel that even if you're in your home and locked away you can feel someone come in and, and hurt you at a distance like these people are worried by the next point to to kind of note is the speed of uh, the younger lady's speech and the, the oh, almost flight of ideas you know I, at the moment i'm not calling this mania yet um, i don't know how long it's been lasting for but i would say that she's got evidence of elevated mood rapid speech uh, probably quite difficult to interrupt uh, and need a bit more time to kind of assess whether there's flight of ideas or, ra or increased thought form. This could just be that she's upset. Absolutely. I'm not pathologizing her yet, uh, you know, her, her behaviors. Um, but if this was, you know, two weeks with no sleep and disorganized behavior and that rate of speech, then that would look like a manic episode. Anyway, let's keep watching. No water, there's no way to find them. If you investigate them, you'll find something. Plain open the witches. Witches? Yes. You know what witches are? You know, they're the witches. Well, if they can do things like that. You believe in witches? I don't, I never believed in witches. I believe that. I mean, well, she's referring, she's class, she's putting them in that class because it's not natural to do How do you do to her? Make her sick of me too. I fall asleep and I, 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 I've told the doctors, they, they, they feel all right. Yeah, like somebody is standing with me in, 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 
Take Choking me like you. this, like this. Sometimes it sometimes depress my, my heart. I can't breathe it. Why? I go to. So other interesting reflections. When someone is describing something that you may feel is a you know a psychotic symptom, like um, someone taking your breath out of your chest or squeezing your heart. Well, you know, we're doctors, you've got to remember the physical health side of things. What if that is angina from a cardiac failure, you know, or an ischemic heart? That, what if that's a pneumonia? What, you know, so you, you've got to think about what are the physical health causes that could be causing these things. Um, so just based on that, I would probably uh, do a bit of a medical history and do some investigation, blood test, ECG, maybe even a chest x-ray if the, if the chest sounds a bit, um, you know, if it has certain sounds uh and i don't know if it's very helpful to have these two people in the room together it, they're definitely working off one another to make themselves more uh distressed and i think that we could probably get better content from the review one-on-one -on -one. uh and so if people are making each other more distressed it's, it's rarely the case that you want them to be in the same room together during a psychiatric review uh, but maybe back then it's a different style of therapy maybe i'm wrong i don't know why they did this uh, i probably would f start s with a review with one of them at a time and then if i felt i needed to have a group review then i would do that as well but often for example if someone gets admitted so it, it you know we have seen you know couples brothers and sisters uh, come into hospital at the same time for psychiatric reasons uh, but it's a very thorough discussion process to decide whether they go to the same ward or different wards um, if it's two if it's two people in a relationship that are kind of you know egging well like distressing each other and um, promoting maladaptive behaviors of one another uh, and they're coming in with self-induced injuries then i can't ever see an example where they should be on the same ward because they're making each other's mental health worse and they probably just need a bit of time uh, to focus on themselves. So, yeah, I'm giving examples, but uh, yeah, but that, that I've seen that a couple of times where we've had to split um, patients who know each other. That's often the better choice because when you're in a mental health ward, it's not about other people, it's about you. It's about getting, it's about getting you know, it's about focusing inwards and, and treating you and then once you're better you can focus on relationships and then function uh, in a more general sense I, I eat my supper and I have perfect health soon I, I know asleep. I'm perfect health I can prove that I'm in perfect health I think they can hurt people they can give pains and they can take the pains away when they stop it yes so why, why do they do it well, I mean, they must, I don't know, maybe they're blackmailing other people, so they're hurt through me. They're doing it, yes. for, they're afraid of being yes. caught, so they're doing it in that manner. And maybe they do things, they want me to, they know how to do things at a distance. If I'll, for instance, if I feel a pain, well, they'll say ahead of time. Well, it'll match with they're their story. They're trying to fit like, in like something. Magic. I don't know the like story. magic, I don't know what, what that is. Together. Like magic. Yeah. I, I, they're trying to fit things yes. together. Yes. To, they, they want I the, can swear. They want I go to accomplish a purpose and they try to I go in this synagogue and I, I swear and I tell this the whole story what, what I know. To but fit you it. have felt they it have only a after purpose. your daughter felt it. You well, haven't felt it before. Yeah, at times. Not all the time. No, at no, times. No, yes. At times they try to have a purpose and they're trying to fit in things into their purpose and they, they want to force people to get into their way to do exactly they should prove that they're right and actually they're framing to get their way Indeed. that's the worst thing a gangster is half as a, is, is really innocent compared to them because at least he if he's a gangster he shows he's a gangster he doesn't want to be caught but it, at least he knows he, he he had a gun and he ran away oh but these are different these want to kill, kill and they want to be innocent that I'm a mother and I see what they do to her. Well, uh, just, uh, why isn't there a doctor continuously in the ward? They wouldn't think when any, they wouldn't do such things when, when a doctor it. doesn't see. That's why they can do things when they see anyone who isn't involved sure, in their well, purpose doesn't see. Well, they can do anything they please. That, that's why the doctor, uh, I, 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 I can't say it, the doctor's uh, uh, purpose uh, uh, keep us here. To kill her. They're blackmailing you and they're blackmailing all the doctors. And when you come on the ward, you, you don't know what it's all about. And if I talk to you, you don't but understand. But nobody is blackmailing me. I don't know. Well, maybe they are because I think they're blackmailing every man they see. So far, I don't Who know. So you can start to see how, uh, how dangerous this can become. 
you know, these these uh, shared delusions and paranoid delusions. You know, they're feeling targeted, they're feeling persecuted, they're feeling like everyone's blackmailing and and uh, targeting them. Uh, that's that's a psychotic process of the brain feeling like everything is referencing you feeling like every one in the room is thinking about you and 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 it's more than just social anxiety right this isn't just feeling judged this is feeling like people are in a coordinated uh, way trying to target you and and get you so uh the next step you know people have different kind of defense mechanisms some people internalize and some people externalize but when you have this kind of syndrome in someone who's externalizing with oppositional defiance and you know um, a history of violence and antisocial uh, personality and and things it can get very very dangerous uh, and so if you have you know the triad of a, a psychotic illness an antisocial personality and substance misuse especially stimulants like methamphetamine that makes for one of the most dangerous triads. And when I say uh, antisocial personality, I include psychopathy and psychopathic traits in that. So that those three are, you know, the, the you know, very dangerous triad. Now, I've noticed in this film that this uh, doctor sits very close to the patients. I'm not sure if it's a depth effect of the of the of the camera lens, but he's really in their space. Uh, I definitely tend not to do that. I always try and give people. Uh, it, it, it's actually an interesting, delicate balance, the amount of space to give a patient. You don't want to be so distant that you are cold. You don't want to be so close that you are intimidating. Um, but you also have to be far enough that you can protect yourself uh, and get up uh, and, and kind of run away if needed because things escalate. Uh, my rule of thumb is I always try and keep my eyes at the same level of a patient. So if they stand up, I stand up. And, and make space because if they're, if they're about to stand over me sitting back in a, in a chair a chair is probably not a good idea um, and if they're on the floor I try and get low as well and, 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 and so I'm not standing over them um, but if they're like crying in, in a corner or something I'll, I'll try and meet them at eye level uh, and that's worked pretty well for me really interested in your points of view especially if you're clinical if you've worked as a nurse social worker psychologist doctor whatever um, how do you, or just counselor or friends and family, how do you guys, how do you manage the distance between you and the person that you're caring for? Because it is actually a, uh, you know, more, it, it's more complicated than you'd think. The people on the, the, the ward. The old woman in the yeah, whole yeah. hospital. The, the, the ward, the ones on the ward there. But why are the women doing it? For a reason, that's what I said, they have a purpose. Yes, Listen, yes. I, you've, left, you've never lived with them, but you've left me with them. I had time to find out what they were doing. Yeah. <laughs> you're plenty smart. Tell me, you, you just told me about the court in Vermont. Yes, I know what happened there too. What I know a lot of, I know a lot, Dr. Lehman. I know so much, I'm, I'm sure I have proof enough for a police case to go to court. Yes. To which court? Courts, courts in Canada, Montreal, there's courts court in the United States. I have, play, I have courts that I can go back to that I've been to and I can prove real crime, lies, I can prove it. I have yes. real proof. Well, what are you going to prove in court? Well, I'm not going to... If you think I'm going to stay in here in this yes. hospital and, and tell the whole story... And in, 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 go back to, to, to this? When the right time the comes, someday I'll be back. free. Someday I'll be yes. free. Uh, Dr. Lehman Would you like to go to court? Yes, yes definitely. Yes. Even, even right now? Yes. Yes. It's a lot of trouble. I want to go I to don't court. Care. I want the truth I don't and justice care. for the everything. Truth might come I'm not afraid the of the truth. Why mm. shouldn't I want to go to court? Yes. <laughs> I go of course to court, I want to go to court. court. That's what I want. Yes. And I think that's how I was brought in here because I tried to go to a court here. I don't know. Everything was mixed up. That's how I was brought here. And some of the people brought me here. Why are they afraid if I go to court? Yes. I'm not afraid to go to court. Other Nobody's people afraid. Are, people yeah. are afraid. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. people that are afraid that I, I go to court. I'm not afraid by the judges. I'm not afraid. Yeah, this um, intensity and pace of speech has really been maintained throughout the review. Uh, if I had collateral history suggesting a longer history of manic episodes um, and psychosis, then the the diagnosis to consider is really a schizoaffective disorder versus a bipolar uh, one illness. Um, schizoaffective disorder, there's uh, psychosis that's chronic with episodes of mood disorder, such as mania, um, but you, you, the psychosis is chronic. Whereas in bipolar, you can have normal mood and no psychosis, and then during mood disorders, 
uh, during mood episodes, such as when you're manic, you can develop psychosis. So that's an important way to distinguish it. And in schizophrenia, uh, there tends not to be a mood component in the terms of like fulfilling criteria for mood disorder. So it's just chronic psychosis. There are days and periods where people are elevated or depressed for sure, but it's not so much that it fulfills criteria for a actual mood episode. It would be very interesting uh, and important in this review to explore the history of the relationship between the mother and daughter. My first impression here is that they're quite a dependent duo. I wonder if they've been kind of isolated living with one another um, their whole lives and, and not kind of um, going out much because of this shared delusions around being targeted by um, criminals and other people. Uh, you can imagine if you have this belief that you wouldn't want to leave the house very often. Uh, even if you do feel they're getting into your house to, to harm you and choke you, you still, you know, probably feel safest there. And one of the, this isn't actually that well known, but a very important aspect of psychosis is the prodrome. Uh, it, it does happen that people can go from not psychotic to psychotic over a course of a couple of days, but much more commonly is that people have a prodrome to their chronic psychotic symptoms. And a prodrome is a period of time, usually usually years, you know, it's a long period of time where, where you see uh, the symptoms of psychosis emerge, but it's actually usually negative symptoms that start. So positive, negative, positive symptoms are uh, hallucinations, delusions, um, you know, you can consider passivity, thought insertion, thought broadcasting, problems with your thought, like people taking ideas out of your head and putting ideas into your head, that kind of stuff can also be considered positive symptoms. Negative symptoms are the absence of things. So, uh, like kind of becoming more withdrawn, not wanting to socialize as much. Usually it goes from, uh, watching movies and TV. Well, usually it goes from playing video games to watching TV and movie shows, to listening to the radio, to doing nothing. Uh, you know, as, as they become more and more withdrawn, they do less and less things. Um, and, and it's, it's a global picture. It's not just, you know, a teenager hanging out in their room and being moody. That's, that's not psychosis. You have to have a conglomerate of symptoms, but they, they start to develop more paranoid beliefs about the world, um, in, in a prodrome. They, they, they don't have the want to see their friends. There's no drive to be socially engaged. Um, uh, they start losing motivation for things they used to want to do and develop anhedonia and avolition. So anhedonia is a lack of enjoyment of things at all. And so they get this flat mood. Uh, not it doesn't necessarily look sad and dysphoric and tearful and depressed, it, it, but, but it is anhedonia. It's just a lack of enjoyment of anything. So they might have used to enjoy doing uh, I don't know, painting or going to play rugby with their friends and then they just stop doing it. Uh, and yeah, it does most frequently happen in, in you know, the most, the, the age of onset for schizophrenia is, is really late teen years. These two ladies look a bit older, you know, I think she's probably 30s and, and 40s and that's her mother there, probably, I don't know, 60s, 70s. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure that about their history. It would be great if we could get case files, um, but it is what it is. It's still incredibly fascinating footage. Uh, the police? No, I'm not afraid of them. Definitely no. not. Have you got a case in court? Yes. What kind of My case? case was never finished in court. Yes. What it case wasn't do you finished have? in the United what, States. What case? I, in fact, I, I, when I, Dr. Cobb told me to go to court when I was in the United States in 79 Argonne Road, that case wasn't finished. No. It was never finished. I saw uh, six judges. It was never you finished. Saw six yes, judges. she yes. was with me. She yes. was in court. I we were both in court. Six judges. Six judges. Yes. Well, what did you see them about? Well, oh. Dr. Cobb told me to go to court. He told me to sue him. You know why? Because I started suing. There was a whole mix-up what with did the you lawyers. Sue him for? Well, first of all, I sued him because he sent me home and he didn't heal my nose. He should have, if he knew I had an accident and he had operated on my nose, he to, should have told me to stay and watch over me until I was healed. He shouldn't have sent me to a different city. That's why I went to yes. sue him. You sued him for, for some money? Yes. For how much? Sure. I sued him for half a million dollars. And he said, if I go to court, if I thought a half a million dollars was coming to me, well, he says, I'm welcome. He was willing to give me, but there was other things that happened. Of yes, course, I understand the now up, why I didn't get any money. I know now why I didn't have the any money. The mix-up, the, 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 the framers. Well, I'm not going to tell you. Who I, know, they, they, I, know they, a lot of, I know a lot, Dr. Lehman, now, but I'm not going to tell in this place. 
When I get at home, when I'm free to go to court and with this police around, that's when I'm going to tell my story. That time, uh, Dr. Lehman uh, can come to us. You can. Uh, in, in if you're that interested she, she in bringing criminals everything to justice. In, in she show proof. She has proof? Of yes, I have yes. proof. $500,000 is a lot of money. Well, Dr. That's Cox not, said he was well. Not, he was, maybe he was insured. Lot. That's not a lot. Maybe he had insurance. Why did he say it? And somebody else to wanted to get the money, and that's why they framed you. Is that maybe the it's the money they wanted to get, or maybe they were mixed up in crime with Dr. Copper or other things. There was, there's a mix-up. That's why I'm ever done. If there were no crimes being committed, I wouldn't be in here. Yes. Don't worry. You are sure of that? Yes, yes definitely. I'm sure positive. To someone who hasn't worked in mental health or... Um, maybe is a little bit anti-psychiatry, <clears throat> it can feel kind of unfair that the doctor is probing for more information. It's like, why are you trying to set these people up? Uh, is this really delusions? Like, uh, they could be completely justified in what they're saying. And the goal of probing is not to kind of say, hey, gotcha. It's really about exploring what is happening in this person's brain and how are they thinking. And... You, you have to probe, you have to explore. And sometimes it can frustrate people. Uh, some people are guarded. These, these two are mostly forthcoming, but she, she became a bit guarded towards the end there, you know, saying, I don't want to tell you, you can come to my house if you're interested in um, putting criminals away. But uh, yeah, it, it's important to probe. And if you are not psychotic and you're seeing a psychiatrist, you usually have the insight to know that uh, you know, what you're saying is <laughs> going to be assessed for whether, for how real it sounds. Uh, if yeah, people who have a psychosis, what they're saying is their view of reality. It's what they're experiencing. So, so it's important. Anyway, the whole point here is to say it's important to probe. And I have a lot. I, have, I know a lot. Yeah, well, take thanks, Zena. Going back. Going back, I want to go back to where I came uh, from before I came to Verdun. To, to go back, that, that, that's the joke, to go, to go back. No, back. where we came from before we came here? Yeah. Going back to the ward. No, to I don't want to go to the ward, Dr. Lehman. Look, you were sitting here and talking to me, and y you acted as if you're interested, and yet... I am interested. But what yeah. kind of an interest? Uh, so what interest did they keep us here for three Why years? Why aren't you interested in the making in, 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 Show in me a little kindness, for people make us Show yes. me some kindness. Quick, you take me to a place kind where I'm person. free. Take I'll sign papers for you. Get an attorney. You've Good got a minus. choice. Okay, Dr. Lemon is braver than I am. If, if I had a patient kind of escalating like that, I'd probably at least try and keep arm's length away from them. Um, I, and I always kind of like do this with my hand. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if you can see that. But I'll, I'll always try and kind of um, have my hands like this because... Uh, I'm listening, but also if you throw, if you throw a, if you kind of, if someone throws a, a hook or a jab, I can either hands up to kind of catch the hit or I can um, try and parry a jab. <laughs> I've never had to do that. I never want to. That's just kind of uh, a martial arts thing that I learned about on a YouTube video once upon a time. I don't want to ever want to have to use that. Um, but he's really close to them and they're getting es escalated. You can imagine that a slap uh, could be generated from very little uh and yeah I, I would anyway i'm not judging him he, he's a he's, he seems like a really um uh you know good psychiatrist so that's just i'm just saying what i would do well take me to a place freedom yeah. i'm a human being i want to feel free i sure. want to feel free and do things as i please as a you know, normal human being think a normal human being would want to do the same things as you wanted to. You're human. Well, I'm also human. You know what you would like. Well, I also like. Well, put me in your class. You're a human being, and you know what I like. If you don't know what I'm saying, well, you know what you want. Well, put me in a home where I'm free. And as I say, you can make me sign papers. I'll do anything. Lena, as soon as we think that you can live outside and you can be happy oh my and God. not be bothered, by others. Well, well if I'm bothered, I'm bo I don't want to be live with people on a board. I want to. I want to live with people. There's a lot of people I could live with who are nice and kind, the kind but they're not criminals. Well, I want to live with such people. Look at the kind in charge. Yes, people. You must tell people your own friends. Oof. So that is the hardest part of being 
well, for me, uh, kind of working in psychiatry is when a patient begs you to, to you know, please let, just let, send me home, be kind to me, but, you know, it's, don't torture me, just, just let me go home. Um, and, uh, you know, I have the right to go home. Uh, and the bigger question when you take a step back, though, is that you also have the right to not suffer from this treatable illness. You have the right to not be psychotic. And if your psychosis is such that you're not a risk to yourself or others and you haven't come to the attention of authorities and there's no problems with it, then people live their entire life in the psychosis. It's when there's risks that you can justify involuntary treatment. Um, but you know, it, it, for me, when I was starting off, I really felt like I was, uh, not doing them a favor, you know, that when I was admitting someone against their will and they're begging me, don't do it, don't do it, please, Dr. Sill, don't do it. That I was, uh, you know, h harming them in some way. And a psychiatrist like kind of snapped me out of it to be like, Sill, <laughs> you're the, you're helping them like this is like look look at them two weeks later it's a different person and often not always but often people are very grateful to have been treated out of their um psychosis because of what they the regret it's a complicated gratitude because there's a lot of regret of what people have done when psychotic that they have it takes a lot of time to kind of grieve and 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 process and and do the therapy and the acceptance and the and the, and moving on from what people have done whilst psychotic so they're not always stoked to kind of come back to terms with reality they were much happier sometimes in in the psychosis and that that raises an ethical interesting question like is it better to live in a psychosis and happy or treat a psychosis and be uh kind of confronted with reality and, and the consequences of the actions uh the, you know psychiatry is full of interesting ethical questions i don't have the perfect answers i just I just uh, do my best <laughs> and it's always case by case. Anyway, that ends this video. Thank you for staying um, and watching. If you found it interesting, please like and subscribe to the channel. That helps the YouTube algorithm. The like will help the, the, the video grow and, and that helps me greatly. Leave comments with any questions or suggested content um, or just say hi. I love, I love going through the comments. I do it every morning with a cup of coffee. And other than that, I wish you all just a beautiful day. Call a friend, tell them you love them and I'll see you all in the next video. All right. Bye for now.